Okay, so today we are starting assignment two. You'll find all the, the deadlines for it in our course outline. We've gone through one assignment cycle. So be aware that we will do on September 21st. We will do in the middle of September. Uh, after we have at least this desk or something that shows progress on posted to Canvas is by midnight on September 21st. And that's going to come up fast. But today's talk is just to, to really do the hard work hard stuff. that are already created on the first So if you only need it for your education, your, your lab, your other things, it's just good to start the classes and get those created on the first I might look for Komodo Dragon. What's nice about the Komodo Dragon, Dragon references I can find in Pixabay is that they're all going to be big enough and they're all going to be decent quality, right? But what can be difficult is finding the parts of the body that you want. And Pixabay only has one page, you know, one of one of images that are tagged with Komodo Dragon. And there's a lot of heads, more heads than I would ever need, but there maybe aren't a lot of the legs, a lot of the neck. But this one looks very good. And so I'll open those in new tabs. And this is why we start with our sketch, because you want to kind of know what you're looking for ahead of time. So... It's only one page. If you go to Google Images and I search for Komodo Dragon, which is pretty a pretty sp specific animal. You know, I could just look for... Remember, you want to customize your search. So even though this gives me just thousands and thousands of results, a lot of them are going to be too small to be useful. So I want to go to Tools and I want to limit it to the large size. And that will be images that are at least a thousand pixels. But then sometimes those images aren't super high quality. So I'll open them in a new tab. Remember, you don't want to steal the thumbnail image, you want the full scale image. And then you can view, you know, open the full image. And then you can zoom in and see what the quality is like. This quality is pretty good and this size is pretty good. But the problem is this image is copyrighted. So I want to, if I used it, I would want to really make sure that it's transformed and unrecognizable, right? And that's why we're going to composite at least five different references together to make our creature. Okay. So those are kind of your options. I'm going to go ahead and download these now. Always choosing the largest resolution option. It's nice to see the actual pixel dimension. Now the other thing you'll see is even when they're, they're good photos, you might lose a lot in focus or in lighting. So if I was looking for like the back end, for my creature, this is a terrible photo reference for that, even though other parts of the photo are very good. But this is one part that's particularly helpful for your creature. It's the collarbone. It's the thing that connects the shoulders. So usually I'll always try to composite the collarbone and the, the arms. So the shoulders, the collarbone, and the, the elbows all from one creature. 
because it's really hard to make that feel stable if you just kind of rig it together from separate parts. It's kind of like the axle and chassis of a car, right? So this is going to be a helpful, this could be, depending on my, on my sketch, a helpful angle and helpful reference. Okay, so I've downloaded all of those. But that's all just one, one animal, right? That's not going to give me much of a fantasy creature. So that's where our sketch comes in. I encourage you to look at Pokemon, especially if you just have no idea what kind of fantasy creature you'd be interested in. There are hundreds and hundreds of Pokemon, and what's really helpful is their silhouette. Just their black outline kind of tells you what kind of character they are, and that can inspire you, right? Because even though our finished composite is going to look very different than the Pokemon, we want it to maybe have that same kind of fanciful impression, right, at the end of the day. So for my demo, I'm going to take these two Pokemon. I was encouraged to do, I think this is Primal Groudon, because it's one of my son's favorites. And my son actually did a little sketch. And so I took his sketch, and then I... I traced over it with my own anatomy. So you're allowed to be um, inspired by your children or by other people in your life. Or maybe you think you know someone that has a favorite Pokemon and to help motivate you, you're going to do your own version of that, right? So you can see kind of a light sketch behind, but I, I gave it a little bit more anatomical structure. And I don't know if I'll keep the tail that my son drew, but I like the idea of combining these two into this kind of creature. And then I made little notes. You can see where the Komodo dragon comes in with the, the arms and shoulders. Um, ideas for the, the head, ideas for the back legs. And I'll usually kind of pick a theme. So the theme this time I think my last demo, I did all mushrooms, and I built a creature entirely out of mushrooms. That proved a little difficult, but it worked out. But this time, I'm going to try to use all lizards and get as much creativity I can creating something new out of all lizard parts. And hopefully creating something that looks a lot more kind of massive and intimidating than a usual lizard. So that sketch is going to be really helpful. It's like the blueprints for, for what we're going to build. And it's just, you know, loosely inspired by these Pokemon. But then I can also look back at the Pokemon and get ideas for color, get ideas for textures. Um, I might include some of this kind of fluffy stuff. I don't want to use tusks this time, but this fluffy stuff might be a, a new kind of texture to add on. That would be nice. So that's why the Pokemon could be helpful. All right. So what does my. What do my references look like? What do I start building once I have the sketch? We're kind of putting everything together here. I'm gonna open up my digital art folder. Nicely organized. And I'm gonna to go to assignment two. So I encourage you to build an assignment two folder. And in photo P, I'm going to open up this sketch. But you can also start collecting your references. So I downloaded some Komodo Dragon references. And I know they're large enough. They're at least 1,000 pixels. And I know they're good quality because they're from Pixabay. I don't know why that came up. Let's see. I think I was moving too fast. And I know all of you have different devices, and PhotoP and Pixabay are always going to download to somewhere else on your computer. So I, I have this downloads folder. I should keep that available and open. And then just as quickly as you can, organize all of your reference 
into a place it's easy to access, right? So that we can bring them into to photo P without a lot of trouble. I have another question. Yeah. If we want to change the color of a reference, we can do that in a similar way we did with the landscape. Exactly. So yeah, what you're really looking at, so here's, here's my sketch. What you're really looking at for your reference is the angle of the anatomy and nice sharp focus on everything. So this is a fantastic high resolution reference of this head. And I really liked the colors and I really liked how defined the scales were. So I wanna use this head. The problem with this head is you see how the top is blurred and out of focus? So this head won't be the only thing I use. I'm gonna combine this with, I think, maybe a horned lizard, because I want some of those horns, right? So you're, you're gonna be using this reference for specific things. And I'll probably get rid of that tongue because that tongue doesn't add a whole lot. And I might change the muzzle and I might warp it and change the, um, the proportions. I might give it a new nostril, you know, it's wide open, but this gives me a good start. And of course, we can change the color, we can change the lighting. All right. So the other, the main thing you're looking at, though, for is the angle. So for instance, this reference is incredibly useful, because just by luck, because I sketched first, but that body, especially those front arms, and I'm not sure why it's having trouble opening, but it matches my, my anatomy pretty well. So that will become kind of the chassis on which I can build other parts. Even though I'm gonna replace the back legs, replace the tail, replace the head, um, expand the chest, this gives me a lot to work with. All right. So unfortunately, my computer is really freezing up. So there you can see it. And even though like that arm is great, but this one is, is turned backwards, you know, and that's not something I'll use, even though it's realistic. Uh, the back leg is kind of out of focus, but the anatomy is there. So this, this is a, a good reference. It's not facing the right way, right? So then just simple things like flipping it horizontally will fix that. So we're gonna use all of our transforming know-how to make this work. So this is a good one. I know I wanna use this head. There's a question in the chat, do you need to do three quarter view? And you'll notice from the Pokemon designs that three quarter view is pretty popular. You want, you want a view that really shows the full creature head to toe and gives you a sense of their dimensionality. And usually that doesn't happen when you look at something straight on and it doesn't happen when you look at them in straight profile, right? But you're not required to use three quarter view. You'll just find that that has a lot of potential. And this one might be good as well for those arms. Okay, so let me open this up in Photo P. Open up my sketch. Let me get the ads off of screen for you. And so this first video is all about the steps you need, the sketch and the references before we can get started compositing. So that was my son's original drawing, right? With the two tails, and I like the texture. So inspiration is helpful, but what really is needed is that anatomy. So that's what I traced over. 